Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform pick and place tasks using components in the works library. Right now in the 3D world, I have components that you can find in the Web eCatalog 2014 collection. I'm going to get started by first talking about the type of tasks you can use to perform pick and place operations. So I'll select a process component and go to the param tab. Now the first type of task you can use is called a feed task. This allows you to feed more than one type of product, and you also have to assign this task a name so you can give it to a specific resource to do. You can also choose what tool and tool center point is used to perform this task. You also have an option for picking all products that are currently contained in a process component. The next type of task you can use is called, you guessed it, a pick task. This allows you to pick a certain type of product and you also have to give this task a name so it can be done by a resource. You also have options for choosing what tool and tool center point is used. Now after you set up a feed or a pick task, you can now create a need for those products. So I'll go ahead and show you. So a need task allows you to place or receive more than one type of product, and you don't have to give it a task name. You also can create a need pattern. Notice this is only available for one type of product, but you can place that product in a certain pattern. You can also use a place task. This allows you to place one type of product. You also have to give this task a name to assign it to a resource. And you can choose what type of tool and tool center point is used to perform the task. Instead of a place task, you can use a place pattern. Just like a need pattern, you can choose what type of product is placed. You can set up a pattern for placing the product. And you also have to give this task a name. And you can choose what type of tool and tool center point is used to perform it. I'm now going to show you how to perform a pick and place operation using feed and need tasks. So I'll select a process component here in the 3D world. I'll go to the task properties drop down list and I'll first create a pattern of components. So I'm going to create this component here, last comp one. So I'll create a two by two pattern, so a total of four products. And now I'll create a feed task. So I want to pick last comp one. And now I need to give this task a name, so I'll call it step one. And now I can choose what tool and tool frame to use for this task. So you notice in the 3D world, the robot has a mounted tool called dTool. And it has two tool center points, so TCP2 and TCP1. Let's go and use TCP2 to perform this task. So I'll get a better view. And I'll reference that tool of dTool. And the TCP name of TCP2. Notice I do not have the all properties selected, so I'm only going to pick or feed last comp one products. I'll create the task, and now I need to assign this task to a resource. So I'll select the robot controller, I'll go to its task list, and I'll enter step one. Hit the enter slash return key. And now I need to create a need for this product. So I'll select the other process component. And I'm actually going to create a need pattern task. So I want last comp one. And I'll use that same two by two pattern, so a total of four products. I'll create the task. So now when I run the simulation, the robot picks the items and places them in the other bin. Now, if I want to change the approach and retract distances when the robot picks and places the item, you can do that. It's very easy. So I'll reset the simulation and I'll show you again. So if I want to change that, I can select the process component, go to the advanced tab in the param tab, and notice I have options for changing the place approach distance as well as the pick approach distance. So let's change the pick approach distance to 1000. I'll hit the enter return key. I'll select the other process component, go to its advanced tab, and I'll change the place approach distance to be, uh, let's do 500. So we should notice a difference between the pick and place distances. So now I'll slow down the simulation just a bit. Whenever you create a pick or a place task for a robot to perform, RSL routines are created in the robot's program that allow you to perform actions before or after an object is picked or placed. Let me show you. So I'll go to the Teach tab. I'll select the robot's program. 
And notice I have pre-pick, post-pick, pre-place, and post-place routines in the robot's program. And they all reference that task I assigned to the robot, step one. So if I was to create some actions before the robot picks the object, let's actually go ahead and turn a tracing on. So I'll use a signal value of 17 with true. After the object is picked, I'll turn tracing off. So notice I'm actually using a set binary output statement. I'll set its value to false to turn the tracing off. So if I run the simulation, I'm now going to show you how to perform a pick and place operation using pick and place tasks. So I have the robot's program selected right now, and I actually cleaned up its pre-pick and post-pick routines, so I'm not doing the tracing anymore. I'll go back to the param tab, I'll select the process component, and now I'm going to create a new pattern of components. So I'll create this component here, lathcomp2. I'll select the process component, go to create pattern, and I'll change the component to be lathcomp2, and I'll create that same pattern of 2x2. Two I'm now going to create a pick task for this product. So pick, and I'm going to reference lathcomp2. I now need to give the task a name, so I'll name it step2. And instead of using TCP2, I'll use TCP1. And I'm going to use the same tool, and I'll create the task. I'll now go and create a place task over here in this process component. So I'll select a component, and I'll select place pattern. I want to place lathcomp2 products in that same pattern of 2x2. Two two. I now need to give the task a name, so I'll call it step 3. I'll use the D tool. And I want to make sure I'm using that same tool center point I used for the pick task. So TCP1. I'll create the task. I now need to assign the pick and place task to the robot resource. So I'll select the robot controller. And now look what you need to do. So I'm actually going to erase step one from the task list because I have to have my pick and place task done in a certain order. So in the serial task list property, I'll enter step one, comma, with no space, step two, comma, no space, step three. So I'm performing my pick tasks first, and then I'm performing the place task last. So now when I run this simulation, the robot should pick and place the objects properly. So let's go and do that now. So I start the simulation. The robot picks the first products and places them. New products are created. The robot picks the product and places it. All right, very nice. So I'll stop the simulation. And because I created those pick and place tasks, if I go to the teach tab now and go to the robot's program, you can notice I also have the pre and post for step two and step three. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our community at community.visualcomponents.net. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.